This playthrough is rated E10+. Do you know the way to Fraggle Rock? I do. Greetings and salutations, viewers. While we're back here with another episode of Sam and Max Hit the Road. In the last episode, we went to the Mysterious Vortex, found Shavul, and got his mood ring, amongst other wacky and zany situations. So let's uh, go to the Shavul and give him his mood ring back and see if we can uh, uh, find our next location where Bruno is. And he did say something about having to find Frog Rock. Like I said, I'd rather find Fra Fraggle Rock, but... Down to Fraggle Rock. Down, 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 down to Fraggle Rock. Man, I haven't watched that show in forever. I think, I think a few years ago they tried bringing it back, I think it was, or something? I don't remember. Unfortunately, the Muppet like, franchise uh, world hasn't really been treated very well. And the last series that they did only lasted like a season. And they tried to... Uh, people just didn't catch on to it. So I thought the show was okay that they did. But I didn't watch very many episodes, so probably got worse over time. It's hard to say. But anyway, now that we turn everything back red, because yeah, I forgot to switch everything to red uh, before leaving, so that way I could just go straight to the door. But oh well. All right, let's go in the door here and find Shavul and give him his mood ring. Come back. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that this kind of reminded me of uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Drink me. You're back. And we're bigger than a bread box. Three bread boxes, even. What do you want now? That reminds me of the Uninvited game where the description of a giant spider was bigger than a bread box. Is this your ring? Cool, man. Have you found Frog Rock yet? No, but I don't see how finding it's going to get me any closer to finding Bruno. Finding Frog Rock's only the beginning, man. Once you're at Frog Rock, you'll need some samples. Samples? Yeah, man. Bigfoot samples. You know, fur and stuff. Three of them. Smear them all over Frog Rock. Put the fur on the rock. Got it. Let's go, Max. Wait. You'll also need some Mystic Mole Man powder. You must be joking. No joke, man. Here, I'll get you some. Here you go. Sprinkle this Mystic Mole Man powder over the fur when you've smeared it all over Frog Rock. What'll happen then? Something wonderful. Thanks. Let's go, Max. It's probably off the uh, edible shabool, but anyway, he gives us uh, whoops, he gives us the powder. Yeah, there it is, right there. It's a charming decanter filled with vile and mysterious liquids. It could be my long lost twin brother, Sam. But anyway, we've already got the three hairs from uh, Gator Golf Bruno's place uh, and uh, the ball twine, or not ball twine. Um, the let's see. The fish. No, not the fish one. <laughs> Have I ever forgotten where I got all the items from? Well, that's just how it is in my old age. But anyway, we got the three three furs. Was it Gator Golf, Bruno's Place? Oh, yeah, and uh, the Mysterious Vortex. Right. <laughs> I don't know why. I forgot there for a second. It's like, my brain don't work. Anyway, well, how are we going to find this frog rock? It could be anywhere in this large nation, and we can't just drive around, even though time really isn't a factor in this game. So what's the best way to find something? Uh, map or Atlas? No. I mean, yeah, that'd be make more sense. But this is Sam and Max. We got to find a weird way to do it. So let's go back to the ball of twine. And remember that uh, binoculars amongst the ball of twine? Well, that's the way we're gonna do it. So let's head over there. So um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to like. I mean, other than just kind of figuring it out, just from like, okay, what do what do I do? Because there are quite a few puzzles in this game that are a bit weird to like solve. But uh. There's like one puzzle. I'll talk about that whenever Take I get away, to it. Like, Max. it took me forever to figure that out. I don't know why, but I think it's that near, near the finale, actually, if I recall, like the final last puzzles. I was just like, how do you solve this? You know, I eventually figured out. It pissed me off because I, I should have figured that out. You know, it happened with me with like some puzzle games. Like Professor Layton was like that too, where it took me hours to solve a puzzle, and I figured out I actually misread the puzzle and I could have solved it faster. So. But anyway, let's, uh, oh, there's that one guy there. Go. So let's use the binoculars. I don't think I used them last time, so. Ah, it's moving too fast, and I can't really control it. Oh, make it stop. Make it stop. It's because the place is rotating. Oh, I'm going to blow chunks. I could be looking right at Frog Rock, 
but everything's too tiny. But how do we uh, fix that, though? We can't get it to stop because we can't really... There's no switch or anything. Hey, what are those again? These wires are somehow connected to the restaurant's motor. Ah. Let's grab them. Because that's smart. I don't know why Max had to be... Or Max had to be there, too. But anyway, you can't really... Actually, as far as I'm aware, you can't use this on anything I better else. put these wires back first. Yeah. He just, uh... He just puts them back if you don't use them on the right objects, so. Now I can control the speed and direction of the diner via these mounted binoculars. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, maybe not. Shocking. But uh, let's try these again one more time. See if we got that right. All right, so how do you do it is there's a, this mechanism here, which we couldn't mess with before, but now that we've got the two wires connected, um, I'm, if you're using a keyboard, it's obviously your directional buttons. If you're using a mouse, the left button will move this little lever left, and the right one will, um, I think you have to like high, uh, have it like set here or something like that, but yeah, it slows it down, so now we can actually um, click, it, click it, and now we can go in different directions. However, we can't really see much of anything, so let's back up again. I could be looking right at Frog Rock, but everything's too tiny. Now, how do you make things bigger? Well, one of the few cases of, of a logical sense, we need a, ma a magnifying glass, and we found one. It's a Verschlugener magnifying lens. It's a Verschlugener. Uh, so, yeah, this all the way back from the uh, carnival, so let's put that okay. in. Okay, I've lodged the magnifying lens in front of the mounted binoculars. Thanks for explaining what you're doing, Max. I wouldn't have figured it out otherwise. Now we can actually see what we're doing, so let's take a look at... That's the Enchanted Argyle Forest. Ooh. <laughs> uh, strange indeed. Let's see. I'll try to show off all the locations. You have to just click on it to it's have it It's a rock. Not frog rock, just a rock. Oh. It's the Inexplicable Valley of Lights. Uh, aren't they just swirling, though? It's the though? Inexplicable Valley of Lights. Oh. It's a rock. Uh, another rock. There's so many big rocks in the world, apparently. Oh, wait, yeah. Mount Badrich. I don't know why it's called Mount that, but... Mount Badrich. There's probably a joke somewhere, like maybe the brand of tire or something like that. It's a rock. Eh, not that either. There's got to be one around here somewhere. Hmm. The largest stump in the world. Another tourist trap. This game, this game has a lot of tourist traps, I've noticed. It's a rock. Eh, another rock. You're confusing me, game. Why, it's the eternal plain of acid rain. What, Los Angeles? Oh, wait, not anymore. What is, uh, uh, in America, there used to be like a um, city, well, other than Los Angeles, that was heavy on acid rain, but I think a lot of towns have kind of cleaned themselves up of that. Although I've heard like uh, in China, like I think Hong Kong or something like that, they have a few acid rain days. Well, they used to anyway, but I don't know about much anymore. But. Mm, it's a rock, and it's between the two things Shavul said it was between. It must be frog rock. It doesn't even look like a frog. And that's the... I think Argyle Forest is that's over here. That's the Enchanted Argyle Forest. Okay, anyway, back up. I think I can see Frog Rock. All right, let's get out of here and back to... Uh, back to the car so we can go to Frog Rock, though. I've got to use this elevator. All right, fine. Can't just walk in elevators these days. You have to use them. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, so... That was one that could easily be missed, too. Like, even though Shibul tells you what to do, but you know. But no, that wasn't the, that wasn't the puzzle that gave me some trouble. Like I said I'll I'll bring it up whenever. Whoops! Excellent. Clicked on the box. I was just trying to click it down here, so I can move it around. Goodbye, world. Actually, I think we had to come back here one more time for the ending, or right before the ending. So, so remember all these places. I think most of the places we go to one more time. I could be wrong though. All right, let's go to Frog Rock. Frog Rock. That's got a weird set of music here. The kind of the Shavul or Mole Man or Strange that you can hear kind of in the background. This doesn't look like a frog at all. My innocence has been shattered by this blatant tourist trap. I want my money back. We didn't pay anything. Well, somebody better give me some money. 
That's my mantra as well. Give me some money because I asked for it. Okay, well, anyway. So now what we got to do is put uh, all the, the hairs on here. It's a swatch of Bruno's fur and mange. All right, put that on the rock. I can't use these oh. things together. I didn't want to use it on Max. I wanted to use it on the rock. I guess I had to click. It's because Max moved himself there. I don't know why you have to do that every time, Max, but... This fur and mange must have belonged to the sa... Whoops. I didn't mean to end the dialogue quickly. This fur and mange must have belonged to the Sasquatch at the Mystery Vortex. Alright. I assume if you're finishing the puzzle but don't have all these, you could just leave them there and come back. So that's why they have the animation for each of those individually. It's the fur and mange from the Gator Golf Sasquatch. Thanks for your contribution, Max. But anyway, finally, the powder. Well? Wait for it. Sure gets dark quickly around here. I don't think this is a natural occurrence, Max. In fact, I think we're witnessing a celestial convergence of some sort. Do you think it'll make that rock look more like a frog? This means something, Sam. Did we get access to a cheat book or something like that? Hmm. But uh, anyway, yeah, apparently I knew it. Moltmen are way too strange to be human. They've got to be from space. They're aliens, I tell you. Or that's a crackpot theory. It's hard to say. We saw what we saw. So anyway, yeah, let's go to Bumpusville. So you knew we were going to run into Convoy Bumpus again at some point, or at least go to his home. So it's basically a take on Nash or um, the Elvis home or any other famous like country music star. So let's go to Bumpusville. <laughs> It's a Conroy world after all. If we ever get this rich and famous, I want you to shoot me, Sam. It'll be a pleasure. It's a Conroy world after all. Yeah, this guy thinks. I wonder if this guy's got a Napoleon complex. Bumpusville. And there's the tourist uh, band. I wonder if Conroy's a member of Good Sam Club. Oh man, that's old school right there. I assume that's the tour bus for people who come to Bumpus Land and stuff like that. I don't know if you can actually check a lot of this stuff. You can look around. I like the detail of the, the, the hedge that looks like him. His large... Yeah, he keeps his head small. It makes his body huge, but still keeps his head small, so... Let's see what else is around here. A wishing well. I wish I had absolute power to decide who lives and who dies. I think we'd need a bigger well. Max basically wants the power of God. Alright, let's go inside. I'm surprised they'll let us, just because, you know, Conor Bumpus doesn't like us. Maybe we can convince them we're part of the tour. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, look at all this stuff. Howdy, partners. I'm Conroy Bumpus, and welcome to Bumpusville. Feel free to wander the mansion. But for Pete's sake, don't touch anything. Howdy, partners. I'm Conroy oh. Bumpus. Uh, and don't touch anything, to huh? You never ran into adventure Feel protagonists before. The yeah, we're done with that. Ooh, there's a cleaning robot. It's a gold record for Conroy's breakthrough hit. Two-fisted, beer-drinking, gun-toting, hard-loving, fast-driving, country-western liverpudlian. I heard if you rewind a country song, he gets his car back, his car starts working, he gets his girlfriend back, and his dog is alive. I can't do anything with it while it's moving. Hmm. It's like a fancy Roomba. It's the platinum record Bumpus got for Let's Drink Beer and Shoot Things. Well, at least country music tells it as it is. 
It's a gold record for bumpuses. Heaven's just like Texas, except that there's no taxes. Uh, no one wants to pay taxes. Unless you want to build roads yourself. Conroy's first 8-track tape. Flush down the toilet of love. <laughs> Cripes. It's titled Me, Myself, and I. Hey, you learned how to read. <laughs> Me, Myself, and Irene. Oh, the platinum record Conroy got for his all-time hit. Smile when you say that, you rock and rollin' wimp. I wonder if they'll let me look at it now. It's a macro hard maintenance droid. TM. <laughs> it's a gold record for Conroy's runaway hit, broken hearted roadkill on the highway of romance. That's a strange life you lead. Bumpus got this gold record for Daddy's two stepping in his two foot grave. I met my sweetie with my fist. That should be a name. It's hard to believe that he sold a million of tobacco spit blues. Hmm. Yeah, this guy must have some of some, uh, despite him being a jerk and everything like that, he must have a type of singing voice. I wonder what his most famous song is. Are you prepared to have your ears either blessed or, or strained? Well, let's find out, folks. The greatest thing ever, maybe. Oh, wrong room, actually. No, this isn't the room we want. <laughs> I Sorry, I thought I was forgetting it was the other room this way. So, uh, yeah, there's Lee Harvey there. So we can talk to him here in a second. So, sorry. So, now be prepared to listen to whatever we want to listen to. Let's see. I believe it's in this room here. So, we'll check everything here in a second. I just want to um, get to the section. This bill is proud to present the master of melody, the king of country, Mr. Entertainment. I hate floor shows. I remember my childhood in Brighton When dear old dad would bounce me on his knee He'd say, son, there ain't nothing as exciting As exposing beasts to inhumanity That's why I'm Happy to be king of the creatures I'm proud to be the lord of the old I love collecting things with grotesque features It makes me feel like some Chaldean god Oh, I trapped my first tiger before I could speak Killed me a bear when I was free and now with this Bigfoot and giraffe neck freak, I finally have a full menagerie. Hit it, boys! Western Star. Thank you, thank you. Your attention, please. Conroy Bumpus has left the building. What was that? It was short. It was sweet. It was uh, it had, you know, Bruno and the draft girl and that one guy. I loved it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I know that's not the best joke. I actually like that song, despite how ear piercing it can be at times. But, uh, huh. So Bruno and, and uh, the draft neck girl got caught at some point. How? Mm. Uh, they were doing their own thing. So, huh. Well, we could just save them right now, actually, and take them back to the circus, huh? What's this? Looks like a keyhole to me. Eh, it's probably nothing. What is this big green thing here, anyway? It's Bruno and Trixie. Yeah, sorry to hear that they got uh, caught. Yeah, if those little electrical things keep them singing. That's why they're so sad. Bumpusville sings. I like how the, all the little <laughs> little creatures sing and everything like that, so... Can we talk to them? Hey, Trixie. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, Bruno. Hmm, 
Are they prevent from talking too? I don't indiscriminately use people, except Max. That's weird. Well, obviously they're here against their will, but he's not my type. Yeah. He's not my type. <laughs> Wait, does that tell us something about Trixie we don't know of? Nah, that's just a general term for Max when he doesn't want to use people. They just didn't change it for Trixie. So let's go save them. Uh oh. What in the name of Jethro Clamp is going on here? Knock it off. Help! Aye. And stay out. Hmm, we're not gonna save him that way. Oh, and did you uh did you kinda catch the goofy yell there for a second? Yeah, the guy who voices uh Sam is a uh, uh Frank um guy i gotta look up his name again but he does he does the voice of goofy as well that's why i don't know if you ever picked up on it the whole time throughout the whole game i just never mentioned it till now but yeah he did the, he does the voice of goofy so which i thought was a nice little touch anyway let's go into that one room we couldn't before and check out some of the creatures here we got a, like a what is it water buffalo a jackalope those things don't exist uh flamingo raccoon oh, there's a guitar there this is conroy's first guitar it says here that he practiced diligently for two weeks, then gave it up and hired a backup band. That story warms the cockles of my heart. So do car crashes. Well, I mean, truth is truth. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of just people who just sing because usually that's all they can do. Like, some of the better artists are ones who can sing and play instruments and stuff like that. So, anyway, let's see. Oh, I got masks and random bric-a-brac here. Cripes, look at all the trophies. I think this bumpus goon is overcompensating for his lack of stature, Sam. And besides, I've got a lot more trophies than he does. Hmm. If you say so, Max. Who's that? It's a portrait of John Muir. Say, Sam, just who is John Muir? Who's John Muir? Hey, guys, this dope doesn't know who John Muir is. You gotta be kidding. What a maroon. What a dib cow poop. Sam, the dead animal heads are talking to me. Where? Up there. Well? But... You really shouldn't tell fibs about dead animals, Max. But... Stop bugging me. I'm admiring this portrait of John Muir. But who's John Muir? Do you really want to know? If you'll stop talking, sure. Okay. Hit it, boys. There once was a man named John Muir. A naturalist, noble and pure. He's not for all beasties. The most and the leasties. Has never been equaled. Uh... For sure. Thanks for the edutainment game. Uh, reminds me back in the 90s where, uh, 80s and like 90s where cartoons had to have a message for children. So they always throw that in somewhere. Some did it better than others, you know. Or they just tacked it on at the end of an episode like G.I. Joe or Transformers or something like that. You know, I like Jeron Muir so much. Yoink. Yeah, take that picture of him. Let's uh, put there and take a Stunning look. portrait of John Muir, famous naturalist. Huh, well, thanks for the edutainment game. Uh, anything else around here we can get? Genuine imitation American style chest. Not intended for any kind of use. A great addition for your genuine imitation American collection. Home shopping. Definitely. Kind of reminds me of my grandparents. They used to just buy stuff all the time just to have it look there when it had no practical use. Look, they're paintings of trophies. <laughs> what are they? Participation trophies? Anyway, let's go into the back to the alleyway or back to the house and to the other side and let's see what uh what else we got around here so let's go through the green thing this time and look at uh lee lee harvey it's conroy's thuggish henchman lee harvey all right is your last name oswald hmm. and what's this looks like a vr machine yeah i think i remember them talking about like during the 90s that vr was slowly like they had movies talking about it but it never really hit stride till obviously in the late like, you know, 2.10s and onward. Hey! 
Visitors ain't allowed to use Mr. Bumpus' state-of-the-art virtual reality equipment. Scram. Don't you remember who we are? I guess not. I guess we're just so, you know, um, uh, unassuming that they that he's forgotten we've entangled each other quite a few times already. But anyway, let's talk to the guy. I feel a my uncontrollable urge to stick bolts in your neck and shout, "It's alive! It's alive!" Nigh. Can I help you too? Yeah, you can help us by answering some questions. Well, we'll be looking around ourselves. Don't get up. Fine. <laughs> and he doesn't seem to. So I, I wonder if he actually likes working for Conway or not. You sure are one dedicated employee. Yep, that's me. Detonated. Ah, you smart too. What you reading? Dialenics by L. Rod Hubble. It's changing my life. I know Scientology. Get it away. Get it away. Oh, God. No, seriously. Get it away from me. Oh, freaking me out, man. Those, those Scientologists, man, they're crazy. So, what's this Conroy Bumpus Yahoo really like? Has he got any deep, dark secrets we can exploit for monetary gain? Hey, don't be casting no aspirations toward Mr. Bumpus. He busted me out of the youth camp, gave me this high-paying 475 an hour job, taught me how to speak Swahili, found a baboon's heart for my sister's transplant operation, and he sings real pretty, too. I really took care of them, except for the money part. I think minimum wage back in the day, even in the 90s when this was came out, I think it was still like five, I think it was like 550 or maybe 525, so he's actually getting paid below minimum wage. How can you stand to work for someone who persecutes harmless beasts like Bruno the Bigfoot? Uh, on my feet? He's got you there, Sam. He's smarter than he looks. Don't you have any misgivings about hunting harmless freaks like Trixie? I did, but then I took a cup of aspirin. Usually does it. Ibuprofen for me, because aspirin is, is a name brand. So, what's all this virtual reality equipment for? The way I understand it, Mr. Bumpus uses a sophisticated virtual reality scenario to interface with the mansion security system. The devil, you say? The devil! The devil! Yep, sometimes Mr. Bumpus lets me use the equipment. I pretend I'm over a hundred feet tall and everyone else is like ants and I just squish, 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 squish. We get the picture. Uh, he has a lot of pent up something going on there, so. Ah, skip it. Now let's talk to him again and get the other responses. My, what big hands you have. Yeah, so. The bear to choke me with, apparently. Ah, skip it. Here, let's try it. What's going on here? I'm filling in for the guy who usually guards this virtual reality equipment. Well, you gotta do because this could easily be like a this is a tourist ah, location, so so you need to make sure people don't touch things like do walking dogs and talking rabbits. You know, I think you'd scare away fewer tourists if you added a little color to your wardrobe. Right, the whole angel of death look is out. Huh? Looks like a weird biker, really. Ah, skip it. Or like a, you know, a Elvis clone or something like that. Anyway, let's go on to the other room and see. So we need to do something with that vir uh, virtual reality equipment, so. Hmm. Wow, it's Monster Truck Weekend! Happening every Sunday. Sunday! Sunday. Okay, I'm over the shock now. I'm not, but I'm sure my gentle naivete will survive. This reminds me of old commercials. I, uh, that's what they're referencing. Is back in the '90s, every time they do like a monster truck, it'd be like Sunday, 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 one night only, one night only. See monster truck, see the the big the big red crush cars, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's one of those things that's cool to see once, but afterwards, yeah, the uh, the the you know all of it is kind of like just eh, get tired of it every while. At least for me. So hmm. why is that specific book? Uh, why is that specific book highlighted for the eye? I don't know. It looks like an official macro heart maintenance droid manual. If I had the slightest inclination to strain myself, I could probably reach it. However, I'm sure I can drag this out into a longer yet more satisfying experience. Yeah, but you know, stretching to get to that would uh, would be a lot of work, though. It's a pillow. 
And you, it's got Miracle Grow hair tonic all over it. Ugh, gross. Also, there's a wig over there. Must be Conroy's. It's one of Conroy's toupees. Like William Shatner. We all know it's true, Will. It's Max. No, that's not what I want to click on. The best never rest. Do the best never rest? How will Bruna and Trixie get out of this situation? Will the freelance police be able to save them? And what does a Bigfoot picnic look like anyway? Find out next time in the next episode of Sam and Max Hit the Road. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.